Hello, everyone. Happy Sunday. Felipe here. Hope all is good with you guys. I'm here to keep you up with current market conditions and teachings. Um, this is in no way, shape, or form financial or investment advice. This is for entertainment and educational purposes only. Great. So with that being said, I'll jump right into it. Um, so basically, I don't know if you guys been uh, watching what's going on in the markets. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll kind of go into something that I've found very interesting. So Silvergate Capital Corporation, which is a bank that has been around for um, quite a while now, I believe since 1988. Um, and they deal in uh, a lot of real estate, right? In the California area specifically, um, everything from commercial real estate to residential um, you name it, they provide loans, they issue loans, they sell loans and so forth. So um, here's some um, their most recent most recent financial um, um, statements. Uh, so the nature of the business for Silvergate Capital Corporation. Let's see. So, um, the company assets consist primarily of its investment in the bank and its primary activities are conducted through the bank. The company is a registered bank holding company that is subject to supervision by the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve. The bank is subject to regulation by the California Department of Financial Protection and Innovation, Division of Financial Institutions, and as a Federal Reserve member bank since 2012 the federal reserve bank of san francisco the bank the bank's deposits are insured up to a legal limit by the federal deposit insurance corporation so they're they're a legit bank um legit banking business and they're even a member of the federal reserve so they're regulated by the Federal Reserve and the California Department of Financial Protection and Innovation. This is a legit bank, um, legit business, right? Been around for a while. Um, and basically, they're at the brink of uh, bankruptcy, which I wouldn't be surprised if they, you know, declare bankruptcy pretty soon, maybe the next couple of quarters. But here... Um, so financial statements um, for Silvergate Capital Corporation. So a reason why I bring Silvergate Capital um, into the picture is basically because they own a lot of property in California um, and they use uh, Bitcoin, right? So they're also involved in the crypto market. They use Bitcoin as collateral for loans and they even lend out I believe margin for Bitcoin um, and it, they use it or whoever gets the loan uses it to purchase property, um, which is something that has been going on in California um, and in even South Florida, Miami um, in the last recent years. So it, this is in thousands. So every number you see here, you add three zeros to um so here we have September 30, 2022, compared to December 31st, 2021. So cash and cash equivalents, huge drop, um, more than half a, a loss there in, in their cash reserves. That's not good, right? Because when things hit the fan, this is the most valuable um, thing a company holds, basically, right? Cash reserves, it allows them to get out of... Out of um, issues right um they've been i noticed that a lot of their losses basically have come from losses from investments that they hold um which i'll go into that in a little bit um intangible assets that's sketchy looking i don't understand where this comes from um it looks like they're pumping the balance sheet to me to make it look prettier that to me stands out as sketchy um derivative assets they hold derivatives total assets so the balance sheet doesn't look bad i mean you look at the balance sheet except for certain except for the cash and cash equivalents you know dropping by more than half um 
the balance sheet doesn't look scary, right? And that's the tricky thing. This this company just smells of sketchiness to me. Um, so here you can see uh, deposits. So they're a bank, right? They have deposits by uh, account holders. Um, and that has dropped. So it means people are losing potentially faith in this bank and withdrawing their money from the bank. Um, so yeah, total deposit has dropped. And also I've noticed they've been taking loans from federal home loan bank advances. Uh, right there, you have a $700 million loan. That's potentially to cushion the huge loss they, they recently had. I don't know, but they are borrowing that money, I believe, at a three point something percent interest rate. Um, so yeah, you look at the balance sheet and it doesn't... Um, look scary until you get to you know actual um performance of of the business right or of the bank so they have had a huge loss um in this last uh quarter um 520 million dollars you can see here um so that right there stands out that's a huge loss um for this bank right uh so basically Again, you, uh, except for that, that's like, whoa, they took a huge loss. The balance sheet doesn't look that bad. Um, and I'm not saying it doesn't look bad. They make it somehow not look bad, which is an interesting thing, you know, how certain businesses can do that. Um, so here you have total interest income. So it seems like they're even making money in terms of interest. Um, uh, Let's see net income you go over here what the hell they made 109 million dollars in that income but i don't know it just seems so sketchy considering the major losses this um silvergate capital has had right uh, so you sometimes got to be careful with these um, financial statements because businesses can pump them up or do certain accounting tricks to make it look nicer um so you really got to sometimes look deep into these um so yeah this is what I, what their big problem has been and what might potentially lead to the bankruptcy of this company and a bankruptcy of this company um i'm curious where what that might cause in terms of um contagion because it seems like this is the contagion that's spreading around from one company to another because um FTX collapsed and then somehow uh, Silvergate Capital was um, caught the contagion. So I wonder if it continues from here on out or, you know, no one knows that. Um, but this uh, what's going on with this bank seems to be really affecting the crypto market and potentially by proxy, it's going to affect the California housing market. Um, so here is a big loss um, and they're holding this loss because this is changing that unrealized loss on available for sale securities. This is securities that they hold, investments that they own that are currently at a big loss. And I'll go into that in a second. $635 million loss. That's pretty, pretty big loss. Um, and here I noticed, you know, literally from last year, this company has kind of been dying. This bank, um, you can kind of see here, uh, comprehensive income has been consistently just going, trending downward. So basically this company has been losing money for quite a while um, since last year, basically. You can kind of see it just coming down, coming down um, from all the way up from January 1st, 2021, $46 million in profits. Um, and then all we see here, um, balance September 30, 2022, $520 million loss. That's a huge, um, that's like all the way on the other end, right? Um, and then it's just been continuously trending down during the whole time you can see here the income has been dropping until it hit the negative zone negative and the negative just keeps getting bigger the negative number keeps getting bigger so i it looks likely that this company or this bank is trending towards bankruptcy um and here's the interesting thing uh net income is positive yet they're taking major losses from their their uh investments and i'll go into why 
they are that is happening and it's very interesting what I found um so nothing really fancy here uh this is um stands out to me uh because banks um money that banks have from depositors or people that have accounts and such a savings account and so forth the bank considers it a liability it makes sense i mean they have to pay interest on that money while it's sitting in the savings account um however they get to use it right they get to leverage it and, and loan it out and make money off of other people's money right that's literally the banking business um but here you can see this kind of stands out to me people are removing their money from the bank they're removing their money from the bank so is this potentially causing a bank run i mean who knows a bank run i don't it doesn't matter how powerful a bank is but if panic sets in and a bank run occurs that bank automatically or most likely will go out of business um unless it's saved by the federal reserve uh so yeah cash again just big big drop actually they they've had to spend or lost a lot of money recently um and here is kind of what yeah so in march 2022 which provided interpretive guidance regarding accounting for obligations to safeguard crypto assets and an entity holds four platform users um as of January 1st, 2022, and concluded that as of June 30, 2028, $52 million of safeguarding liabilities and corresponding safeguarding assets were subject to guidance. Certain Bitcoin collateral for the SEN leverage loan products held by exchanges or other custodians at the end of the reporting period. The bank works with regulated digital asset exchange custodians i'm not quite sure what they mean by regulated digital asset exchange um, and custodians because uh, digital assets such as cryptocurrencies i believe are not um regulated by the government so that's the tricky situation about this uh bank um since they are involved in digital assets and digital assets are not regulated by the government fdic cannot cover losses when it comes to um, digital assets such as Bitcoin. And this company has seems to have some sort of involvement in lending for purchases of Bitcoin and using Bitcoin as collateral. So there's margin involved here and margin is dangerous because it's borrowed money, right? Um, so here's what really stood out to me. Um, so well this is more on the cryptocurrency stuff so um see bank works with custodians as well as other indirect lenders to act as its collateral custodian for such loans and to liquidate the collateral in the event of the decline in collateral coverage below levels required in the borrower's loan agreement um so they have the ability if prices of bitcoin get um, below whoever took a loan to buy it to margin call and liquidate said bitcoin to meet whatever liabilities they have right um so this um is potentially leading to further declines in the crypto market right and specifically bitcoin um and i feel like if this company declares bankruptcy is really going to hit the big uh, the crypto market as you have um, been seeing the crypto market um, other than a huge rally it recently had um, trending downwards. Uh, so yeah, this is super interesting and it shows the damage that rising interest rates does to um, institutions, companies, and so forth, right? This is a bank, right? And they hold a lot of assets. That's how a bank makes money. So available for sale securities, amort amortized cost is the price they've paid for said security. And this is as of September 30, 2020. And gross unrealized loss is what that what they have lost on that asset. So US Treasuries, 138 um, 
thousand loss, dollar loss, not bad. Um, U.S. agency security, excluding mortgage-backed securities, seven million nine hundred thousand dollar loss. Uh, government agency mortgage-backed securities. Uh, so you see, they're involved in heavily in mortgage-backed securities and in um, mortgage loans for commercial and all kinds of things. So they're involved in the real estate market. Um, so this could potentially affect the California real estate market um, in some way. Uh, government agency Carol collateralized mortgage obligations. That's a hard word to pronounce. Um, 64 million. So total assets for sale. They've um, in the assets this business holds, they have lost 600 million dollars um, as of recent as of September 30, 2022. Um, and why this stood out to me, uh, it's it's US, it's government, government um, assets, basically government bonds, mortgage-backed securities, government agency, US treasuries, municipal bonds, municipal bonds or what cities um, issue when they want to build roads or parks or whatever, they're they're trying to fix in the city. Um, look at that. That's bad. Um, that means you know, rising interest rates are really killing the bond market. I mean, you can see it here with um, the huge losses uh, this bank is having. And this is potentially something that is spreading around, right? Because how many banks and other institutions hold? these investments which are considered to be the safest investments you could possibly hold right u.s securities they're backed by the full faith of the u.s government you can't get much safer than that but it just goes to show the bond market is getting destroyed by proxy that means cor corporate uh, bonds are getting hurt and all other bonds including um municipal mortgage-backed securities and so forth are performing really really bad um, that's overall really bad for the whole um, U.S. economy. Um, so yeah, that is kind of some scary stuff uh, to see. So yeah, this business or this bank is involved in the housing market in California, California area. So everything from one to four family, um, which is basically residential, uh, multifamily such as duplexes and so forth commercial construction real estate property is their collateral um consists of non-qualified single family residential mortgage loans so they rent they lend to risky borrowers um with this here non-qualified uh or riskier borrowers um and then here you can see south south california market area the primary risk of real estate mortgage loans include the borrower's inability to pay material decreases in the value of real estate that is being held as collateral and significant increases in interest rates. Like I showed you above, it's hurting the bond market really bad. And that is bad for the overall economy because it slows things down dramatically and leads to bankruptcies of many, many um, corporations and now we're seeing banks, right? Um, so this is what I find interesting. Commercial and industrial, commercial and industrial loans consist, consist of US dollar denominated loans to the businesses that are collateralized. That is a hard word to pronounce. Almost exclusively by Bitcoin or US dollar, also known as our core lending product, San Leverage. Um, so that's how they use to... Um, exchange these um, these vehicles, the send leverage uh, system. Send leverage provides Bitcoin or US dollars as collateral in an amount greater than the line of credit eligible to be advanced. Um, they can to and to liquidate the collateral in event of a decline in collateral coverages below levels required in the borrower's loan agreement. That's basically a margin call. Um, if the whatever asset is collateralized falls within uh, with a certain level um, under whatever the borrower borrowed to purchase that um, 
that asset at whatever time or um, investment, they got a margin call. They got to put up the money. If they don't have the money, they are able to liquidate that asset or um, collateral um, asset or whatever you want to call it to pay for whatever they got to pay for. Um, so they have the ability to margin call people and it seems that they have uh, influence in the Bitcoin market. So if this leads to big margin calls by proxy, Bitcoin has to come down if it's not already priced in. But I don't I don't I'm speculating that, a, you know, a bankruptcy is never truly ever priced in until it is declared. But you never know. Um, I learned this from looking at this statement, which is pretty cool. Um, you know, you always learn something when analyzing businesses. Um, and maybe you know this, maybe you know, uh, you do not. Uh, so a reverse mortgage loan. Um, what is this? So a uh, company purchase home equity conversion mortgage. That's that abbreviation there, loans also known as reverse mortgage loans, which are a special type of home loan for homeowners aged 62 years or older that require no monthly mortgage payment and allow the borrower to receive payments from their lender. Reverse mortgage loan insurance is provided by the U.S. Federal Housing Administration through the HECM program, which protects lenders from losses due to non-repayments of loans when the outstanding loan balance exceeds collateral value at the time the loan is required to be paid. Other loans can consist of consumer loans and loans secured by personal property. So basically, they, um, they also provide reverse mortgage loans, which is kind of the opposite of a mortgage loan, right? It's when a owner of said property or a home owns has a lot of equity in that home. And then they can do a reverse mortgage loan and then get paid their equity back to them until that equity is no longer there or it exceeds um, the actual collateral value of the home. So the true value of the home. So that's pretty cool stuff. I didn't really know about reverse mortgage loans, but learned that um, through reading this stuff, which is pretty cool. You always learn um, things when analyzing businesses, right? So the loans to value ratio of these loans fluctuate in relation to value of Bitcoin held as collateral. This is crazy to me that they would use Bitcoin as collateral considering how volatile um, it is, right? It can go up and down like $10,000 a day, like nothing, right? Um, which may be volatile and there is no assurance the customer will be able to timely provide additional collateral under these loans in a scenario where the value of Bitcoin drops precipitously um fancy word so um yeah that's crazy to me they um use bitcoin as collateral and i'm would imagine bitcoin is not insured by the fdic it's not regulated yet or from my understanding there's no regulations towards it yet so it cannot be insured by the FDIC. And I believe there is no digital asset that is. Um, so yeah, that's um, some interesting stuff, right? Um, and how I'm curious that will potentially hit the California real estate market and Bitcoin by proxy um, due to uh, potential margin calls, right? So um, how is the actual stock of silver um capital corporation doing pretty horrific um this thing was like 230 bucks 200 yeah 230 bucks um october last year november last year peak of the market i believe absolute peak of the market especially peak of the crypto mania that's when i think bitcoin was like 60 grand um this thing has lost 97% of its value. If you were in this, man, I'm sorry for you, but that is pure slaughter right there. Absolute slaughter. Um, and this is what I was showing, right? Um, how badly uh, bonds or the bond market is performing. Corporate bonds are not doing very well themselves, right? So this is overall just, you know, 
downtrending um and the whole overall bond market right it doesn't matter what what whether it's corporate government bond mortgage backed securities and so forth um the trend is not looking good. Um, they're performing not very good. You do not want to be in the bond market. You'd be losing a lot of money, as you just saw, um, how Silvergate Capital Corporation has been losing a ton of money um, in the bond market. Uh, and that's scary because every business and every major business, all the blue chips, Apple, um, and so forth, have investments in U.S. Uh, government treasuries or something similar to that. Um, so yeah, that's some some stuff there um, that I've been looking at and found interesting and in how it might affect potentially the California real estate market and Bitcoin. And if Bitcoin falls further, that means the whole crypto market is going down, right? Because typically um, Bitcoin is the big guy in the crypto world, right? Um, so when that goes down, anything that is a digital asset basically uh, goes down. Um, yeah, so with that, um, thank, uh, I'll leave you with a market quote. Uh, the fact that other people agree or disagree with you makes you neither right nor wrong. You will be right if your facts and reasoning are correct. And this is a quote by Benjamin Gra Graham. Warren Buffett's mentor and a mentor of many great um, legends in the investment world, right? And a strategy. Um, this is called the barbell strategy. So basically, make sure that you have plenty of small bets. Avoid being blinded by the vividness of one black swan. Have as many of these small bets as you can conceiv conceivably have. Even venture capital firms fall from the narrative fallacy with a few stories that make sense to them. They do not have as many bets as they should. If venture capital firms are profitable, it is not because of the stories they have in their heads, but because they are exposed to unplanned rare events, such as negative black swans. So the barbell strategy of taking maximum exposure to positive black swans while remaining paranoid about the negative ones. As I said, and if my portfolio is exposed to a market crash, the odds of which I cannot compute, all I have to do is buy insurance, potentially option puts, or actually invest in insurance um, vehicles, which are typically safer, right? Index um, insurance vehicles, such as index universal life and, and so forth, or get out and invest the amounts I am not willing to lose in less risky securities. So take a more um, conservative approach, basically. Um, yeah, so with that being said, um, thank you guys for watching. Um, I hope I provided some valuable information to you today, and I'll see you guys soon.